Lounge from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Guys, good morning. Good morning. How are we doing? Woo. That was a game last night, Skip. That was a game, and that was a development yesterday. <laughs> yes. Right? Uh, yes. Uh, safe to say the situation with John Gruden and the Raiders, it escalated very quickly yesterday, all unfolding last night, and we will get to the latest right now. So here it is, following the emergence of more offensive emails from the past 10 years, John Gruden has resigned as head coach of the Raiders in a statement. Gruden said, quote, I love the Raiders and do not want to be a distraction. Thank you to all the players, coaches, staff, and fans of Raider Nation. I'm sorry. I never meant to hurt anyone. Shannon, this all happened last night, and uh, you've had an evening to think about it. Your reaction to this? Well, I'm not surprised. I believe this was the Mark Davis's only choice that he had. I'm surprised that Mark Davis had these emails on Friday, and while he allowed John Gruden to Thank coach. You. Thank you. Because he yes. thought this was going to blow over. He had no idea that this thing was gaining speed like a, a truck going downhill yep. at 60 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. So this was his only choice, and it gave him an opportunity to get out from under that albatross of a contract because John Gruden was never going to pay that contract off with Super Bowls. Skip. And I have John Gruden's statement here. He says, I resigned as head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. I love the Raiders and do not want to be a distraction. Thank you to all the players, coaches, and staff, and fans of Raider Nation. I'm sorry I never meant to hurt anyone. John Gruden. Mm. Not to offended groups. I want to apologize for my hurtful and insensitive remarks. I realize that my comments hurt a lot of people. And I want to sincerely, not I didn't mean, yes, you yes you did. Because the people that when you use those terms, you might have didn't mean to hurt those groups, but you meant those in a derogatory way when you were ex describing the people that you were talking about. C come to Skip, you're a head coach, and I granted, obviously he didn't know at the time that he was going to go back to coaching and he's going to have an openly gay player on his roster. I said, we talked about this yesterday, Skip. I said it's going to be very hard for him to stand before all those black men yep. having said that and lead effectively. Yep. I'm like, and I had a bad moment. Come to find out, you had seven years of bad moments. I don't have one racist bone in my body. I don't know how many racist bones you got, but I know you got a very insensitive and a racist tongue in your mouth. Yep. We do know that. And so, the emails took place over seven over years. Over seven years. So it, 2018. So think about this, Skip. So it's not a, he said he had a bad moment. Yeah. Come to find out you had seven years of bad moments over a period of time where you use this. Now, I don't want people to think that John Gruden is the only one. Now, there's a lot of people in NFL offices scrubbing emails right now. That's what they do, Skip, because this is the way you talk amongst friends. What would possess you to send that? Now, I'm sure, Skip, he did not think the person that he was sending to would be in the organ organization that would be the focus of a criminal probe. He had no idea that was going to happen. Yep. Now, this might be collateral damage. This might be something more serious out there that they didn't let out, and John Gruden had to go down for this one. Because yep. it's hard for me to believe. About 650,000 emails? This is all you got? Ain't got nothing on the owner? But we'll talk about that. I'm sure we're going to talk about this another day on the time, Skip. That's coming down the pipeline. He clearly does not feel that what had transpired should have cost him his job. He doesn't want to be a distraction. Damn what he says, Skip. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to be a distraction. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm sorry for what I've said. Yeah. Not that I shouldn't have said this. But I don't want to be a distraction. And right now I'm being a distraction. Skip, I, I, I just don't get it. This is John Gruden. This is who he is. Now, I need all those. See, now, I had a problem with this. It seems to me a lot of his former and current players, a lot of his current and former coaches, and a lot of co colleagues rushed to his defense. Now, I need them to rush to the defense of the people that he offended when he was sending those emails. The blacks, the LBGTQ community, mm -hmm. and the women. I need them to stand up for them like they stood up for John Gruden yesterday yeah. and the day before and the day before that. Yeah. Where are they now? Ain't nobody saying nothing about them. It was old poor John Gruden. Oh, man, this is not the John I skip. Just one time. You have, have you ever heard somebody say something racist, something misogynistic, something homophobic, and say, yeah, that's who I am? Or do they always say, that's not me. I don't have that type of bone in my body. Just one time I want somebody to tell the truth. Skip, when you come with an apology offered without explanation, all he had to do was say, I was wrong. I said some things that I shouldn't have said, but as I told you yesterday, Skip, I said he's trying to get out in front of something. I said something more serious is coming down the pipeline. I had no idea what the information that Mark Davis had already had, but I knew it was when somebody says, I might have said some other things too. When no, 
dry snitching on himself yep. to try to go ahead and get out in front of it. But Skip, this was the only thing that could have Mark Davis could have done. There is no way because he was going to try and survive this because not only is John Gruden his coach, he's a very close friend mm -hmm. of Mark Davis. Yep. And so with that being said, he's going to try to salvage it. But he just couldn't. He mm -hmm. knew it. The fallout was too great, and he did the only thing that he could. But don't think that he wanted to do this. I don't want people patting Mark Davis on the back. This was the only route that he could take. Mm -hmm. It was the only door that would open, and he walked through it. Mm. Okay, I'm going to start where you finished with Mark Davis. I had the privilege of getting to know his father, the late, great Al Davis. And he had his faults, did Mr. Davis. Yes. But those faults, including being anti-league, because he was the ultimate original Maverick. maverick. He, he, yeah, he had a little outlaw in him. He did. But he rebelled against the league for reasons that, that you could argue were in some ways justified. Mm -hmm. And yet, when it came to being progressive as a thinker and a doer, he led the way. Mm -hmm. And all I know is that I covered Mr. Davis's Raiders from about 2001. It was Chucky's time there, Gruden's mm -hmm. time, uh, through 04-ish. And you realize who his right-hand person was in that franchise. Yeah, Bruce Allen. No. No, we got to oh, go Mark. up one more. Oh. Amy it, Trask. Right. Okay, yes, yes, yes. So okay, yeah. Al Davis was the first that I know of to say, I want a woman to be my right hand. Yes, yes. To be. I worked with her at CBS. Yes. Okay, you did. I did. I, I, I forgot did. about that. I know that. Amy very well. Okay, but she was there starting in 1997. He elevated her into mm -hmm. the primary position yes. beneath him. Now, Bruce Allen was there who became the confidant and cohort of John Gruden. Correct. As the buffer between Al uh, and John. Correct. And remember, those two, Al Davis and John Gruden, they began to clash right away. Yes. And there were some, let I witnessed the end of one coming off the practice field. They, they would have out and out <laughs> screaming matches on the practice field in front of the players. But Al Davis was very progressive when it came to open-minded thinking that was not prevalent in the early days of the National Football Our League. Shell. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Our shell. He went to historically black institutions in college and got players. Okay. And the Al Davis did. Yeah, Al yes. Davis did, and he yes. he hired our show to Yes, yes. he was very progressive in his thing. I was Art the first? Uh, in the modern era. Yes, he was yeah. in the modern era. That is correct. Okay, so you got to give the father high marks. I, absolutely. High, high marks. Yes. The son, not so much. Right. He chased John Gruden for about seven years right. while John was the primary voice on Monday Night Football for ESPN. Correct. And finally landed him in 2018 for, as you pointed out, $10 million a year for 10 years. Yes. Historic contract. Correct. And you would think that having associated with John as long as he did, he kind of grew up, they were like brothers, you right. could argue. Right. That, that he would know John's mindset, off-camera mindset. Of course. He, he would socially sort of know what he was made of, uh -huh. what he was all about. Now, I've told you, I got to know John a little bit in my days at ESPN, and I was with him in some casual settings, but they were, they were ESPN sort of party settings. Right. And I think he was careful with what he was saying, but right. he could really talk ball. And right. that's why, it, and, and obviously, he was really good on television. Yes. And I do not doubt, and we'll get to this a little later, I do not doubt that John will pop back up at some point on television somewhere. I don't know how, Skip. Okay, some, there'll be some network that will have a place right. for that. Mm -hmm. I, I, okay. just, I just okay. warn you, it will come yeah. at some point. It may be five years from now, okay. but, but after it, quote, unquote, blows over, I don't know how you can, it, like he touched every bay. He, it, exactly. I, I don't know how many, uh, what's left to offend, it's, maybe some religious groups. Correct. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so... I'm disappointed that Mark Davis could take so long. And I think uh, even Adam Schefter was reporting the league was beside itself waiting because the ball was in his court. Yes. We talked yesterday. How do you punish him? Well, he's punished himself. He, right. he, he's, he's tarnished his legacy. Right. right. And I, I just thought it was any moment now Mark Davis will say, well, I can't go forward because how did the team respond Sunday's game against the Chicago Bears. They laid an egg. They laid an egg because their hearts were no longer mm -hmm. in it because they said all the right things as far as supporting Gruden because I think they were afraid of him, right. frankly. And 
again, some of his ex-players, the, the great Tim Brown mm -hmm. said, not one time did he ever make me feel any certain type of way or, right. you know, and everybody defended him. Mike Tirico on NBC, mm -hmm. Tony Dungy on NBC. They said what he said was wrong, but let's forgive and forget and go forward. We had no idea the avalanche that was about to hit. But think about it, Skip. And this is another point that I wanted to make. When he said this about the black, it's about give and forgive and forget. When he made those those homophobic, when those those gay slurs, when he made when he said what he said about women, that was a screw. That was a bridge too far. Mm. All I'm saying is that I don't. Well, I mean, I told you yesterday. I thought the bridge too far had already been crossed. That's what that's what I thought too. Yeah, and, but and it I, wasn't. And, and the black players showed you, or at least the whole, let's do black and white players. Right. All of the players showed you right. on Sunday. Their hearts were no longer right. in supporting this guy. But Skip, if you think about it, mm -hmm. it wasn't the outreach. It was a little bit of outreach.